Hi, I'm astrologer and life coach Penny Dix. Welcome to my YouTube channel. If you've not been here before, I would be super thrilled if you could subscribe to my channel. If you have been here before, welcome back. And today I'm going to take an in-depth look at the runners in the forthcoming race for the position of new Prime Minister of the United Kingdom. So I'm concentrating on the three main people in this race, which is in no particular order, Liz Truss, Rishi Sunak, and Penny Mordaunt. But I'm also just gonna have a brief look at a kind of an outsider who may just go and surprise us all. And her name is Kemi Badenoch. So coming back to Liz Truss, let's start with her chart. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look at each of the charts and then overlay the new moon in Leo, which is happening on the 28th of July on each of their charts to see if any of them have got anything to celebrate around that time. So let's start with Liz. Now for Liz, we don't actually have her birth time. Um, dear old Google couldn't provide that, but it has provided us with her birth date, year and place of birth. So I'm using a noon chart for this reading. Now she's son Leo. Now that's actually super cool for her. This is going to give her an edge perhaps on some of the others because she likes the limelight. She likes to perform. She will enjoy the attention from being up there on the stage. And her moon, interestingly, is in Pisces. And you know, that's a really nice position for her moon because the moon in Pisces gives her this ability to be very empathic, sensitive, and also to have a good intuitive feel for life if she's developed that side of her character. Now, interestingly, her natal Mercury in Cancer is conjunct her sun. It's an out of sign conjunction, but nevertheless, it's conjunct. So she will be good at talking, at public talking, at public speaking. And she will give a sound kind of um, talk because Saturn is also in Cancer conjunct her natal Mercury. So she almost has a Sun, Mercury, Saturn conjunction. So the Saturn in Cancer is not the best placement for Saturn. So she needs to try and borrow some of Saturn's structure and stability gained from its ruling sign, which is opposite in Capricorn, to give herself that statesmanship edge. Her natal Mars is in Taurus. So this shows us that she won't be frightened to take some risks where the, where the economy is concerned. And that could be one thing that actually acts in her favor. So let's look a look, take a look now at how that new moon is going to affect Liz Truss. Well, first of all, because her birthday is on the 26th of July, and this new moon is on the 28th of July, both the sun and moon are conjunct her sun in Leo. This is a super good symbol for her. Will she have something to celebrate? It'll be very interesting to see what unfolds over the next few weeks. So let's see what else is going on in this chart, which might give her that edge. Well, interestingly, she's got her Mars in Taurus um, return. It's conjunct her natal Mars in Taurus. Not only that, of course, but we're working up towards the triple conjunction of Mars, Uranus, and the North Node in Taurus, which is one of these astrological events that happen rarely, but certainly only once in our lifetime in that particular sign. And you can check out my video um, also on my channel, which is all about the triple conjunction 
between Mars, Uranus and the North Node. And I tell you, the areas of your chart where you can expect the energy of this conjunction to play out. But back to Liz, let's see. Well, I think this could be a very interesting time for her. And there could be life-changing decisions that come at this time that really she has to take absolute advantage of. So the symbols are good for her for really being up there with the front runners. And who knows, maybe she will even pick all of them to the post. One final thing before I finish up on her reading is that transiting Pluto is actually opposing her natal Saturn. So she has a bit of a, I think, inner tug of war between showing how super statesmanship she can be and with actually doing that. So Liz, if you're watching, have confidence and courage in the fact that you are a son Leo. You can do this. You can be where you want to be. So let's move on to our next um, chart and who we're going to look at next. Well, let's do ladies first in this top three. So let's look at Penny Mordant. And she came up as a rank outsider. Now, what's interesting with Penny is she is the only one of all four charts that I'm going to look at today that I do have a birth chart, uh, sorry, a birth time for. Now, when I saw this lady's charts, she's super interesting. She is very Pisces. Not only is her son in Pisces, but her moon is in Pisces, her Venus is in Pisces, and her Mercury is in Pisces. And wait for it, so is her ascendant. Now, is this good for Penny or not? Well, on one side of things, this makes her super empathic, super sensitive and super intuitive. Wouldn't it be quite nice if we had a prime minister who was intuitive and actually sensed how things were going and didn't just rely on what the, um, the numbers tell them? So, you know, maybe that's actually quite good for us. We know she likes cats. She's got four Burmese. Now, that puts her in my good books. Also, she's a penny, so she must be nice. But she certainly comes across as a very warm lady. But let's look at what else is going on in her chart because she's got Mars, her natal Mars in Capricorn. Now, that's super nice. This makes her very hardworking, very structured, and very determined to achieve the goals she sets for herself. Now, that's certainly the sort of energy that we would want for a prime minister, a leader of any country. Now, her midheaven is interesting because it's Sagittarius. Now, Sagittarius, of course, is about law, legality, truth. It's, it's ruled by Jupiter. So it's also about this ability to cut through, to see the future. And with that Piscean energy, she must have amazing vision. And if she can find that inner confidence to stop any kind of little wobbles on her inner side, inside, inside her, then she could really come out as one of the top runners, as has been shown in the polls so far. She has been up there in the top two. And so this Sagittarius midheaven really serves her well. She can lead with this kind of energy. But let's see where her Saturn is, because Saturn gives structure. And her Saturn squares her sun. Her Saturn is in Gemini. Now, I don't think that's a bad thing. I think this gives her an ability to be committed, to work hard, and really be mindful of what she says. Because remember, Gemini 
is about communication. So she will be super careful about how she puts herself across. And she will want to stick to truth. This will be something that's very important for this lady. Truth will be paramount for her. Let's put that new moon energy on top of her chart and see what we learn about Penny and the 28th of July and the new moon. So the new moon for her is in the sector of her chart, which is to do with her daily working routine. Well, of course, this goes both ways because whatever happens, I would think whether she wins or doesn't, her daily working routine is going to change dramatically. So this is a chart that is keeping us guessing. But the part of fortune, which is this Arabic part, which is all about literally what it says, good fortune, is conjunct the ascendant of this new moon in Capricorn. Now that's super interesting because it's in the part of Penny's chart, which is about her career. So there is very significant emphasis in this chart for some kind of success. But let's just have a look at that Taurus energy because we need to see what that triple conjunction, which comes just at the beginning of August, how that energy is going to affect her. Now, interestingly, it's in her sector of finance. And this means it can also be about property. Is she going to move house? Does this mean she's moving into somewhere that maybe the house number is number 10? There's certainly significant changes in her material world at this time. And with that Mars Uranus North Node triple conjunction in her house of finance, I think it also means she is well placed to work well with economic factors in the world because those two nodes, the South Node and the North Node, tie up her ability to work with other people's money that would be the country's money. And it's also the south node is in Scorpio. And Scorpio is the eighth house. It rules the eighth house. So it's actually a super good position for that south node to be. She is bringing experience, actually, of working with other people's money. Now, I don't know much about her history, but I find that super interesting. Right, so... Will Penny be in the uh, lineup? Well, I think she certainly might be one of the two, but let's see about Rishi Sunak. We haven't looked at him yet. So again, we don't have Rishi's um, birth time, but we do know that he's a son, Taurus. And leaping straight ahead to that triple conjunction, it's conjunct his sun, his Mercury, and his natal Chiron in Taurus. But let's unpack that in a minute. His moon is in Aries, so he's got plenty of fire, plenty of um, passion in what he talks about. And of course, we don't know what his ascendant is. But sun Taurus gives him stability and loyalty. It means he has some some roots, some firm grounded roots. We know he's good with finance because he was the Chancellor of the Exchequer. So we know that is something he is going to be certainly up there in the sort of the top echelons of the runners with his ability to understand the economy of the United Kingdom. Now, because his son is conjunct Mercury, this is super good for him because this means he will be able to talk and he will be able to talk about money and finance in a very eloquent way. Also, because of the, the sort of public wounds he's already received when his own financial background was 
under the spotlight and really scrutinized and that of his wife, he, he's learned how to roll with these knocks. So this does put him uh, psychologically in a good position. Now, his natal Venus is in Gemini. Venus is about money. So this gives him an ability to be fairly flexible as well with economy and how to manage it. And let's see where his Mars is. Well, his Mars is in Virgo. Now, Virgo is a bit of a worrying sign. It's a, it's a sign of anxiety. So Mars shows us he might be in this position, he may be a bit cautious about making too many changes that will cause turbulence in the general sort of collective. Let's now bring in those transits and see how this new moon on the 28th is going to affect Rishi Sunak. Well, as I said, this triple conjunction of the North Node, Uranus and Mars are conjunct his Sun, his Mercury and his natal Chiron. This man is gonna have huge changes. Now, of course, because the three charts I've already looked at are in the running for this key prime top job, of course, all their lives are gonna change dramatically whether or not they win or lose. But there is also something in Rishi's chart which says he could be a tough one to beat because these are life-changing changes that are happening for him and putting down very solid roots with this Taurus energy. But let's just see where that new moon falls in his chart. Well, the new moon for him is not making any significant aspects to his natal chart. So does it represent a new beginning? Well, it can do, but it's not overtly obvious. Whereas Mars is conjunct his natal sun and his natal Mercury. So, that energy is kind of like, whatever happens, he's going to have something quite feisty to say about it. Let's just look at Saturn because transiting Saturn at the moment is squaring his sun. Now this of course does give him determination to succeed. It's also squaring his natal Mercury. So he has a lot to say about the changes that he would like to make in the whole structure of how the government would work should he succeed. Will he win? Well, Uranus, transiting Uranus, is conjunct his sun, and Uranus is also conjunct his Mercury, as I've said in that triple conjunction. You know what? Anything can happen with this energy. Anything can happen. I know this isn't very helpful because you'd really like to know who is going to win. Well, let's look at the rank outsider. So this lady, Kemi Badenoch, is apparently gaining some support. And interestingly, now again, we don't have her birth time. So we're just having to use a noonday chart, but her son is in Capricorn. This is super cool for this young lady because the sun in Capricorn, she's very young, she was only born in 1989. The sun in Capricorn means she has staying power. It means she's determined. It means she's good at winning, even if it takes her time to achieve her goal, she gets there. She also has Saturn in Capricorn. So a few years ago, she had her Saturn return. That will also bring enormous changes. And her Saturn, her natal Saturn in Capricorn, is conjunct her natal Uranus. This woman's going to surprise a lot of people. And she could just do it with this kind of energy. She's also got Mercury in Capricorn. 
she's a no-nonsense person. She's going to say it how it is. And she could shock all of us by a sudden kind of rise to fame. Now, her moon is in Scorpio conjunct Pluto. Now, Pluto, of course, rules Scorpio. This is super good energy for her. So she has the power to transform, but with empathy and sensitivity. But she can actually get to the root of secrets, things that are kept hidden, and do something about it. Her Mars in Aries is extremely well placed. As Aries, Mars rules Aries, so it's the perfect position for it. This is a fiery lady. In spite of that Capricorn energy, which gives her absolute solidity, this is one we really have to look out for. Now let's put in that new moon energy and see how it affects this new front runner. Well, transiting Pluto is conjunct her Mercury. Whoa, she is really going to surprise a lot of people. Let's look at where the new moon is because the new moon for her is, we don't know what part of the chart it's in, but it's squaring her natal moon. Is this good or bad? Well, it means that there are huge challenges for her. So if she did succeed, I think she will come up against a lot of criticism and a lot of challenge. But because she's Capricorn, it won't phase her. Let's just see what other energy is going on. She's got Saturn in this new moon and squaring Jupiter, which it will be anyway in her natal chart. So Saturn squaring Jupiter is like she is so determined to expose the um, underhandedness of what goes on in politics. She might be someone that other politicians are really quite scared of and may do things to try and make sure she doesn't succeed because of the type of personality she is. But let's just look at where this Mars, Uranus, North Node triple conjunction is for her. Well, of course, it is, as I said, Uranus is conjunct Jupiter. So she's got all those three boys, those three really big energies conjunct her Jupiter. She can change the world. She really has an ability to upset the whole apple cart. Now, I didn't think that that was the um, result I would come to, but I think she's the one we have to watch out for. I have my own personal favorite. Um, and um, I think at the end of the day, what one has to say is that the ultimately we, we all have to wish that the, the right person for the job is elected. And do I think they all stand a chance from their charts? Yes, they're certainly all going to be elevated into the public eye and into the public arena. And whether they become PM or not, I think all of them will certainly play a role in the next government. So on that note, thank you so much for joining me for this in-depth look at these three, plus the outsider, runners in the race for Prime Minister and Living at number 10, will it be Penny with her four cats? It won't be me with my four cats. That's funny, I've got four cats. <laughs> it's me for Prime Minister. Will it be Rishi Sunak? Or will it be Liz? Or will it be our rank outsider, Kenny? Time will tell. Thank you for joining me. Please like, comment, share, subscribe. I'd love it if you'd subscribe to my channel. And Thank you so much for joining me here and I look forward to seeing you next time. Bye for now.